This is Dr. Emily Sterning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Tennessee. Now, this is a state where we're already seeing the effects of extreme storms. There's very sad stories out of Tennessee about people being drowned in these extreme storms. I'm going to help you build a picture of what the federal government projects Tennessee will be like in 2050, and we're going to highlight disaster preparedness in that context. First things first, I want to show you why many people in Tennessee might be reasonably skeptical about climate change. Check out this map here. So this map shows the historical changes in the hot days in the southeast. If you look at the key here, as we get towards blue, we're looking at decreases. Red, we're looking at increases. And let's zoom in really good on Tennessee. You can see that there has been, across most of the state, like an 80% decrease in days over 95 over the last 120 years. So if you have a neighbor who has felt that drop over the course of their lifetime, and they tell you they don't believe in climate change, I hope that data makes it easier to see where they're coming from. When we look at what's changed in the Southeast over the last 100 years, it's more subtle, and many people won't have noticed it yet because they're asleep. And we're talking about here the changes in the nighttime temperatures, and those have increased pretty dramatically in Tennessee. We're going to scroll down here. So these are the nights over 75. And when it is over 75 at night, your core body temperature has trouble cooling down to deal with heat stress during the day. So if it's over 75, you've probably got the air on in your house if you have air in your house. If we look at this map, we can see that overall, this state has seen pretty dramatic warming in the nighttime. The number of nights over 75 has increased by like 70% on average. And we need to be concerned about this, not just because it has increased, but because it's gonna increase more. Let's check that out. Just a second here. We have some good modeling for nighttime warming in the Southeast. If we look at the federal report, we actually have warming for a couple of time points and models, but we're going to focus in on the mid 21st century lower emission scenario, which fortunately seems more likely under our current legislation and path forward. So if we look at this lower emission scenario at 2050, we're going to zoom in closer here, but we can see that there's some big changes projected for Western Tennessee. Eastern Tennessee, you're looking at maybe a few days, extra warm days. Even in this heat island around Knoxville, maybe a month in like a terrible year. But you could have three months of warm nights over Memphis. Three months where if you don't have the air conditioning on, people are not going to be able to recover to do labor outside the next day of any kind. You're going to lose a tremendous amount of work hours and you're going to have increased sickness, increased cardiac problems, increased respiratory problems because of the heat stress. But you know, if we can get that air conditioning, we're a very resilient type of mammal, right? If we can get cool at night, we can tolerate a lot of heat stress during the day. And on that note, let's take a second to look at what the summer changes are projected for this area. We'll go over to the USDA heat zone map. So this is contemporary data. This is a 1980 to 2009. And we can see that in the heat zones today, there's a real difference between the Western and Eastern half of the state where we've got the mountains here and some very cool summers up in the mountains, maybe 30 days above 86. Down in Knoxville, maybe a couple of months. And here by Memphis, we would expect more. We would expect for most of the summer, it's gonna be over 86. And let's look at what we're going to see in 2050 in that lower emissions scenario. Really substantial changes, right? One thing that jumps out to me is the fact that these mountains are not going to be able to maintain what feels like a traditional mountain summer cool pattern. The mountains in the middle of Tennessee here are going to warm up dramatically. And we see some big changes over the rest of the state, right? We've got totally new colors going on here. That means a longer summer, a hotter summer than we felt before, particularly here on that western edge of the state. But I want to make sure that we pull back for a second and we put these changes into a context, into a context our bodies can understand. 
If you look at how hot Memphis is today, that's how hot Jackson, Mississippi um, currently is, the projections for Memphis. If we look at how hot Knoxville is projected to be, that's similar to how it feels in Memphis today. So there are big changes, but they're not changes that take us out of the human experience or that take us out of the Southern experience, right? I would worry a, a fair bit about the higher elevation plants and trees. And I wanna talk for a minute about why. You know, if your higher elevation forests have trouble, that can lead to increased fire danger. That can lead to an entirely new type of disaster for Tennessee. We've seen it happen out west where trees on the mountains have died from these local changes. And up by Yosemite, it's just been terrible tree death. It's been a tragedy that if you haven't seen it, it's hard to believe it. The entire landscapes have died. Huge forests have died. Ecological succession taking place in 10 years that normally you'd expect over a hundred minimum. And then after the tree death, there's all this dead wood standing and there've been those massive wildfires in California. We have to keep what's happening in West in mind and learn from it when we look at this sort of temperature change in a higher elevation area. That scale of wildfire isn't a definite problem in Tennessee, not yet, and hopefully it won't happen, but it's an issue to keep a serious eye on. And when you think about disaster preparedness, you know, it looks different in different parts of the country. And we feel differently about disasters, depending on what we're used to. If I woke up to an earthquake in Iowa, I, I'm not cool, I would be freaking out. But people who have been in California a long time, a little earthquake, they literally roll over and go back to sleep. In Tennessee, there are plenty of extreme situations for which you are already prepared. But the disastrous flash floods that have been starting the last two years, there's a current lack of preparation for those on an individual and a community level, and both of those are crucial. This potential for wildfire, this issue to keep an eye on, it shows us another event where lives will be lost that could have been saved with individual and community preparation. Keeping preparation in mind and thinking about how much hotter it could get, it's worth considering the fact that Tennessee is on the edge of the area where we might worry about dangerous wet bulb temperatures in the summer. You've probably heard that phrase, wet bulb temperature. Everyone who's experienced humidity knows that it makes heat feel different. A 94 degree day in New Mexico with low humidity, you feel pretty comfortable. But a 94 degree in Iowa with high humidity, you, if you go sit outside to cool off, you're gonna be stuck to your chair and you are gonna be gross. It gets too hot and that's 95 degrees. 95 degrees is the magic number, people. You can die in 95 degree weather if it's really humid out. Of course, that magic number goes higher as the humidity goes down. It can be 114 in Phoenix with low humidity and you're all right, right? But I feel like if I'm gonna store one number in my brain, it might as well be the lower end of the danger scale, the bottom of the red zone, if you will. Particularly if your family includes little children or people over 60, because their heat tolerance is more limited. You shouldn't push any sort of physical activity on them over 95 degrees. So if we see heat waves as part of our extreme weather in the future, which is likely, you can readily imagine that in Tennessee, you could get a heat wave of 100 degrees for a prolonged period of time in this area. And if it was also very humid, that heat wave would kill people who didn't have a way to cool down. You're gonna need functional air conditioning. It's not gonna be a luxury in this future. It's gonna be a necessity. And that means power is a necessity. So strengthening the power grid to make it resilient to heat is gonna be very important for Tennessee. And so our community approaches to cooling. That doesn't need to be high tech. It means keep the funding going for the library so that people have an existing place to go, an existing community institution where they can get tooled down. We have to hang on to the great community institutions that we have, and we have to help them get stronger as we prepare for the future. For those of you who have more of like a bug out mentality, there is also a low power solution to escaping a potentially fatal heat wave, and that's going underground. If your home has a deep basement, like an 1890s to 1910 style basement that was dug really deep to be used for food storage, you're probably aware of how much cooler that basement can be, even on very hot days. If your power goes out during a dangerous heat wave and you're concerned about getting to safety, you don't wanna leave your property, get down in the basement and just don't do anything. Even a five degree differential could be enough to save your life so you can work on getting the power fixed after the sun goes down. We can get very scared 
when we hear about new threats, like these potentially very dangerous humid heat waves, potential wildfires. But if you make a plan for these things, just like how you have a plan for a tornado, for a house fire, for any disaster, you have a much better ability to respond to the danger. Let's take a second. Let's look at our current patterns for extreme weather in this state. I feel like we need to talk about that as we're going through this sort of disaster mindset, right? Let me get the page up just a second. All right, here we go. So scientists were not great at predicting the weather really far out, but we are able to look at trends and we see that these trends often continue. So as a proxy for changes in extreme weather, we're gonna look at historical changes in heavy precipitation. This is days where there's been more than three inches of rain. If we check out the key, let's remember that the blue means a decrease, the red means an increase. And if you're looking for a nice place in the future, in 2050 Tennessee, what you're gonna want is pale circles where there currently isn't a huge trend towards very extreme weather. And we do see that. We see an area with pale circles in the middle of Tennessee, and we notice some blue ones and some red ones. So it's not a big drought tendency like you might have by the border. And it's not a big deluge tendency like you have right up here in that northeast corner. I do want to draw your attention to this central area where there's sort of a limited change trend because that area also has very nice stability in the agricultural zones. And let's go over to that. Let's look at your agricultural zones. Here we go. So right now, almost the entire state is pretty squarely in zone seven. And I've got news for you as we change over to the 2050 lower emissions scenario, that's pretty much where we stay. We see the winters are going to become milder, warmer around Knoxville, probably mostly because of a heat island effect. And uh, Memphis here is going to have milder winters. But this whole central area, we see excellent conservation of the plant hardiness zone, limited trend for change in precipitation. That's kind of a nice sweet spot there that's worth pointing out. So, We've covered a lot of ground here, right? Let's try and pull it all together. Overall, the outlook for Tennessee is challenging, but it's not as rough as for many other parts of the country, and we can see a lot of what we need to do to get ready. There's work to do here, and a lot of it is good paying work. You know, HVAC, electrical infrastructure, those are good jobs as you prepare for a warmer future where you need really stable air conditioning. You do have these new threats to prepare for in Tennessee. I mean, two new types of natural disasters is kind of a tall order. You might need to prepare for changing wildfire patterns if you start to see a lot of tree death in your higher elevation areas. You're gonna need that solid power grid because the state is gonna need more cooling, especially in Memphis. That nighttime heat combined with longer projected summers, it's one of the southeastern cities seeing the biggest potential heat challenges, seriously. Memphis, it's you and Raleigh. The feds are the most worried about the two of you in the entire Southeast. On the bright side, that area in central Tennessee is really looking very nice. There's great stability, relative stability on a lot of different fronts. I'm also interested in Knoxville. Knoxville has a relatively pleasant outlook for a Southeastern city. Not a huge heat up so far, not a lot of deluges, kind of out of the path of hurricanes, right? It might be looking at some real potential for growth. There are many people who are going to want to go to a place that feels, you know, Southern, that has some pretty traditional vibes, some good music. As people need to come in off the coast, I think Knoxville has some degree of destination potential. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.